Hi, I'm Kent. Let's replace the thermocouple in my kiln. A few years ago, I got my kiln and did a full rebuild on it. That's actually some of the first YouTube videos I made. So if you want to go back and see how I started on YouTube, you can go and check those out. I started my pottery journey out with a small little caldera test kiln. It was nice, but I could only put four tiny little pots in. These aren't the pots I was making at that time, but they were about the size, so I could only put four of those. So after doing pottery for about a year and deciding I liked it, I wanted a bigger kiln. So I was looking around on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and found an old used kiln for sale. I was looking for one that had a good body and I didn't really care too much about the electrical system because I knew I'd probably upgrade that. And indeed I did. I found the kiln, it was an old Scut 231, which is a modeling system they don't use anymore. Basically it was an equivalent to a Scut 1027. I managed to squeeze it in my car just barely and get it home and started to tear it apart and indeed the electrical system was not in good shape. However, the kiln itself was okay. All the bricks were pretty good and the hinge was there, the lid was good. I went ahead and tore out both the electronics and the high voltage electrical system. The electronics now is run by a Raspberry Pi and I can connect to my kiln over Wi-Fi. This lets me program different firing schedules and I can then also monitor the progress. And I went ahead and replaced the high voltage system as well. So I put in new elements and I have the relays that turn it on and off, which are controlled by the Raspberry Pi. And along with that, I got rid of the kiln sitter and put in a thermal couple to be able to drive the programs. That was a couple years ago. And I think it's time to replace my thermal couple. Recently with my firing, I was getting something a little bit weird. Here is a graph of the program, and you can see the white line, which is what actually happened, versus the green line, which is what was supposed to happen. And the thing to note here is that at the top of the temperature range, it got a little very jaggy, and then jumped up all of a sudden and came back down. What was happening, I believe, is that the thermocouple wasn't reading the temperature properly, and it actually got a little bit too hot, and I remembered to put cones in this time, and indeed it fired hotter than I was intended. I meant to try and hit cone six, and it probably hit cone six and a half or maybe six and three quarters, just shy of cone seven. Luckily, that wasn't a problem for the pots. They did okay, but I do want to go ahead and fix the thermal couple. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and open everything up and take a quick look around and see if there are any other maintenance issues that we need to deal with. Before I get into this, I should say that this is a what I did, not how you should do it. Hopefully this is informative, just so you know how your kiln works. Obviously there are significant dangers by playing around with high voltage. And even if you understand those, you could also go ahead and fry your kiln controller. The original thermal couple I got was actually a scut thermal couple. I wanted to go ahead and use as many name brand parts as I could for the rebuild. Basically my goal was to go ahead and turn this old kiln into a scut 1018. So I took out one of the rings and then replaced the elements with the equivalent elements of a 1018 and a scut thermal couple. The thing that's majorly different is the control system. I didn't buy a scut control system, I built my own. This time around, I bought this off of Amazon. So this is a generic thermocouple. I will put a link in the description to the one I got. At this point, I have no idea if it's good or not, but hopefully it'll work okay. It's a little bit longer than I need, but I think I can go ahead and make it work. So what we're gonna do in this video is go ahead and pull the old one out and put this one in. So let me move you around and I can show you what we're up to. Welcome to the inside of my kiln. So you guys are sitting down in the kiln itself. And this here is the thermocouple that we're going to be replacing. If you look, it's a little bit corroded and there's a crack here on the ceramic piece. Everything else in the kiln is looking pretty good. There are some cracks and you know, there's a few pieces that chip out, but those aren't really significantly worse than when I started. One thing you'll note down here is that some of my elements have come loose. I noticed that recently and what I did is I took some of the wire used to pin these in and basically just put under there to support them. You want to be very careful. Once the elements fire once, they become extremely brittle. I've seen some people, when they go and replace the elements, basically go and grab them and the elements crumble and they say, oh look, my elements have gone bad. Actually, that'll happen with basically new elements as well. So you can actually go and move these and put them back in, but you need to get them glowing red hot and then they can deform and you can push them back in. Or as I did, I just went ahead and supported them Hopefully they won't move too much. If I notice they're moving too much, then I might reevaluate this. This isn't really a problem. You probably want to be careful that they don't short out. And the temperature on this particular part is probably not quite even. There's a little bit of a dead zone here. But in terms of the overall kiln performance, it should have a relatively minor impact. If all of your elements wind up sagging, then one, you probably didn't put them in right, or whoever installed them didn't put them in right. And you might want to think about replacing them. But so far, these elements, as I, said, I got them a couple years ago when I re rebuilt the kiln, and they've been going well. So the thermocouple, it will corrode because of basically the gases giving off during the firing process. And those will come from your clay body and the glazes that you do. 
and can create some caustic elements that will eat it away at the thermal couple. Potentially it would eat away at the elements and the bricks as well, but I think the thermal couple is the thing that is relatively sensitive to this degradation. But taking a look around, everything else is in good shape. So now let's jump out of the kiln and we can show the other side of this. All right, here is the outside of my kiln. I apologize about the lighting, had to open the garage door and you can see my shadow. So there's basically two pieces here. This here is where the kiln sitter was. I have basically taken all the pieces out of it and it's where the thermal couple connects. This here is an electrical box where the relays and the Raspberry Pi sit. Behind that's actually the original boxes. I wanted to basically extend this away so that it got as not hot as possible. So what we're gonna do is basically open this up so we can take out the thermal couple. I think while we're at it, we'll go ahead and open the control box and make sure there's nothing weird going on in there. So this here is the high voltage line coming in. This here is a USB cable that's connected to a Wi-Fi dongle so I can connect to my kiln controller over Wi-Fi. And then this one here is just a regular 120 US plug-in that powers the Raspberry Pi. All right, so we need to take the front plate off. So it just has a couple of screws here. And while there's a knob and stuff, that's not functional. That's just keeping things closed in. All right, there's the faceplate. So the other thing is this yellow wire. This is a special thermocouple wire that goes into the kiln controller as well to measure the temperature. So this here is a thermocouple block. It's basically how it's mounted and provides electrical connections. So to pull the thermocouple out, I need to go ahead and undo that. And hopefully you can see that since the lighting isn't very good. I got the screws out, so we should just be able to pull this out. And it's a tight fit here in the corner, but let me pull it out. All right, and there we go. There's the thermal couple. So let me go ahead and undo the wires and I can show you this a little bit better. Here is the old thermal couple and the new one. You can see how corroded it is right there. And obviously you can tell that these are different links. I'm hoping that I'll be able to just pull this back and it will be okay. And these are the same type of thermocouple. They're both K thermocouples. That's often what's used in kilns. There are a couple of others that I think can survive higher heats. There's actually two different metals here that come together and as they heat up, magic things happen. I think there may be semiconductors. Someone can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but that's actually what creates the signal that then gets measured and turned into a temperature. So what I wanna do is basically move this down a little bit and I think I want to go ahead and reuse this block since I know that the screws I have line up properly there. So we can go ahead and disconnect this. And while I'm doing this, the other thing to note is the polarity matters. If you put it in backwards, you'll wind up getting more negative as the temperature increases as opposed to more positive. So there's that one. Let me go ahead and undo this one as well. All right, so that's basically about what I want. These are color coded and these are not. So I'm not too sure which one's which. I guess we'll have to try it out. I think I'm gonna steal these little ceramic pieces here. All right, there we go, basically the same. Go ahead and tighten this down. And then I wanna do a quick test to connect this up and then make sure the temperature is reading correctly. So I just plugged in the thermal couple. I'll show you that in a second. And here is actually the software I use. This is open source software. And I have a profile here that basically just graphs the temperature. So it sets the temperature something relatively low and then just keeps reading the values and graphs them. 
And apologies for those in metric land, most of the world, this is in Fahrenheit, but the same idea applies. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to the thermocouple for a minute and see if the temperature goes up or down. The fact that it's reading 82 degrees right now is not promising. It's definitely not 82 degrees ambient temperature right now. All right, that is going down, so I'm pretty sure they're backwards. So let me go ahead and swap them around and see if we can get it to go the other direction. All right, I just swapped around the thermocouple legs and we'll see if we get a better temperature now. Now it's reading 76, that seems a little bit better. Let me get out my heat gun and go ahead and use that to warm up the tip of the thermocouple. All right, that's looking good. Temperature just jumped right up. And now if I let it run for a second, it should slowly decay back down. All right, and with the heat removed, you can see the temperature is dropping. So we have the polarity correct now. And these temperatures make sense. So the next thing I'll do is go ahead and trim the legs off so that it will fit in the box. All right, I forgot to push the record button, but I was able to cut it off. That was not easy. This wire is definitely very heavy gauge. I recommend buying the right length wire if at all possible. However, with some persistence, I was able to go ahead and cut it off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and connect this back up and verify that it's still working, and then we'll go ahead and reinstall it. All right, got it connected back. And the reason cutting this doesn't affect the temperature reading is because it's actually measuring the temperature by checking the junction here. And this is the semiconductor physics that's going on. Go ahead and snake this back in. Show you the hole. You can probably see it a little bit better than I can. And see if we can find the screw holes. There we go, screwed back in. And there we are back on the inside. It's sticking through, looks like about the same amount. All right, let me put the cover back on this one here, and as promised, we'll go and check out the control box. All right, I got that back together, and so let's go ahead and open this up, and then we can just check it out. All right, and there's the inside. So up here are the two relays. Over here is the high voltage. This here is a power supply, and down here is the Raspberry Pi. And these wires here, the white ones, are the leads from the elements to the relays. You can see back in there the yellow wire coming in. I see some dust, but I don't see any other problems, which is great. All right, off camera, I'll go ahead and close this back up. And there's one more look at the new thermocouple. And in comparison, the original. So hopefully this one will serve me well. All right, while I was getting that together, the temperature has dropped back down. You can see that the white line jumped up and then has decayed back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to this. I think it is damaged, but just in case, I wanna have a backup that I might be able to put in. And time will see how this new thermocouple works. Is it as robust as the manufacturer's version or does it have some issues? Definitely for the first few firings, I'm gonna pay very close attention to my cones and making sure that they look right and match up to what the graph's doing. So with that, I can go ahead and make some more pots and do some more firings. If for some reason this doesn't work out, I'll make sure to go ahead and add something to the description to note that. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, let me know, thanks.